After a week of traveling, living in a hotel room, and eating at restaurants, I was so excited to get back into my kitchen and meal prep some homemade foods. Join me in the kitchen as I meal prep fall-inspired breakfasts, two super simple dinners, and lots of whole food snacks. So to start, I am making some apple pie baked oatmeal. I love having a big batch of baked oatmeal in my fridge so that we can eat through it throughout the week, have it for a couple of days, and then I don't have to think about breakfast early in the morning when I would rather be getting a walk in or getting some work done. And then whenever my kids wake up, I just cut off a slice, warm it up in the microwave, and it's ready to go. So here I am chopping up a bunch of green apples. I love green apples when they are baked or in pie or in this baked oatmeal recipe. I sauteed those with some cinnamon and brown sugar in a pan. Then to a large mixing bowl, I made a couple flax eggs with just ground flaxseed and water. I whisked this well and allowed it to thicken before adding in some apple puree or applesauce, some non-dairy milk, maple syrup, vanilla, a little bit of coconut oil, some baking powder, cinnamon, salt, and a little bit more brown sugar. I whisked this well and then added in quite a bit of rolled oats and a little bit of oat flour. I stirred this until just combined and then once my apples were nice and soft and caramelized a little bit, I added in half of the apples to this rolled oat mixture and I stirred that to combine before pouring it into a greased or a parchment paper lined 9 by 13 inch baking dish. Yes, this does make quite a bit of baked oatmeal but it was so nice, it lasted us quite a few days for my family of four. So if you have a large family or just don't wanna think about breakfast for a few days, I highly recommend this fall inspired breakfast. And then I took the remaining apples and put them on top just to decorate the top and make it look super festive and like a decadent fall breakfast. Next, you're just gonna pop this into your preheated oven and bake it for about 30 minutes, I believe, until it's set and holds together well, and you have breakfast for the next few days. As you'll see in the next clip, my kids could not wait until the next morning to eat this baked oatmeal. Mom, this one. Okay, your one turn. Daddy. Here's Mama, one more bite. Daddy's turn. And this one. Hudson, you want Daddy. one more bite? Sorry to do on camera. I'm gonna poke you in the chin. <laughs> Choo choo choo! Daddy's turn. Now the oatmeal you made is good when your sweet tooth daughter asks for it for dessert. I think this is a hit and it'll be so nice to have for breakfast the next few days. While the baked oatmeal was cooking, I started on some dinner and wanted to make sure I had plenty of leftovers for the next couple days for quick lunches or even another dinner. And I started to make some red lentil dal or red lentil curry in my Instant Pot. Using the saute function, I just sauteed some fresh ginger and a cube of pre-frozen turmeric, which I love using fresh turmeric now, although it does stay in everything. And then I added in my spices, my tomatoes, some vegetable broth and coconut milk, and of course, red lentils that had been rinsed and drained. And then I just popped the lid on my Instant Pot and allowed this to cook just for about six minutes, I believe. And it was so quick and easy and made for such a hearty, flavorful meal all throughout the week. And I think one of the best things about this recipe, outside of it being so easy to make, is that it tastes better the longer it sits in your fridge. I allowed this to cool before putting it into a large Tupperware container. This thick stuff that kind of gets caked on the side of your pan is the best part. Oh yes, I did just eat that. Mm. So good. Next up, I made a batch of granola and I wanted to switch up the flavors a little bit as I always make just a simple basic granola. And since it's fall for a lot of you, I decided to make some chai spiced granola. As a food blogger, I'm often recipe testing and sometimes things turn out okay and need a little bit of tweaking. And that was this recipe. I think the biggest thing is that I want to include more spices and pre-melt the almond butter and the maple syrup together so that it coats the granola well. But all in all, this was a really delicious oil-free granola. Once I had all the oats, nuts, spices, almond butter, and maple syrup stirred together super well, I poured this out onto a lined baking sheet, spread it out into a thin layer that was even so that it would bake evenly, and then popped this into my oven to bake for about 
22 minutes in total. I love to put it towards the top of my oven for the first 10 minutes, then put it down towards the bottom for the next 12 to 15 minutes. And because I'm not stirring it, but just changing the position in the oven, I always end up with super clustery, crunchy granola. So definitely try out that trick if you haven't before. Always allow your granola to cool completely before you transfer it to an airtight container. I'm interrupting this meal prep to tell you guys about my new favorite electrolyte drink, Element. You guys all know that I love to sweat and this means that I can lose a ton of the electrolyte sodium. I really hope I can capture how sweaty I am. And if I'm not careful to replace that sodium, I can sometimes experience muscle cramps and fatigue. That's why I love Element. Not only does it taste amazing, another awesome flavor, but it's perfect for athletes and exercise enthusiasts like me. And when you use my link, drinkelementtcom slash TCE, you guys will get a free sample pack with your order. And this has all of their eight flavors in it so that you can try them all out, see which one you like. I love citrus salt. It makes me want to work out. It's so good. So be sure to use my link. Next up for a whole food fall inspired snack, I started by roasting some pecans in my oven. Pecans don't take too long to roast. I usually roast all of my nuts at 350 degrees for about 8 to 15 minutes depending on the nut. Then I allowed the pecans to cool completely before putting them into my food processor with some pumpkin seeds, spices, and a pinch of salt. And then I processed these until a meal formed before adding in my pitted dates. My personal favorite dates to use are medjool dates as they're really large, sweet, and sticky and they help to hold your energy bites together really well. They also make your food processor work pretty hard, as you can see from the shaking of mine. But as long as I've removed the pits, my food processor can always handle it. And you'll know when you're done when your dough can hold together when pinched between your fingers. And then you can either make it into a rectangle and cut it into bars or roll it into balls like I did. And as you can see, everything I prepped so far is orange or brown, which is fine with me because it means fall is here. Although I live in Malaysia and it's still 95 degrees, but you know what I mean. The last thing I wanted to prep before I called it quits for the night were some large Japanese sweet potatoes. I had them roast in about a 400 degree oven for an hour before I turned off the oven and then I just allowed them to sit in the oven overnight and the next morning they were nice and soft. Ideally, I would get all of my meal prep done in one session, but that's not always realistic for me. So the next morning I continued my meal prep while my kids were still asleep with making a big batch of green curry. This is one of my favorite ways to eat a ton of veggies. I just put some oil or water in a pan, saute some onions, some fresh ginger, and then I add in some store-bought green curry paste, which is the easiest way to do it and usually tastes amazing. And once my green curry paste and my aromatics have sauteed for a while, I add in some coconut milk. I usually use coconut cream as that's what I can find here and it's really really inexpensive and then I just dilute it a little bit with water but I add in that coconut milk and then I just dump in whatever veggies I have on hand usually they're green and this time I used quite a bit of frozen veggies as well and that saved me a ton of chopping and allowed me to use some frozen peas for protein and it was just such a simple delicious meal to have on hand that we could pair with rice or even noodles for a green curry noodle dish and I always love having a curry in the fridge. Curries always taste better the longer they sit in the fridge and they're super hearty and comforting, especially for you guys as you head into the cooler fall months. The last few things that I wanted to meal prep were some fruits and veggies that we could just have on hand for snacks or I could put on the side of our lunches or dinners just to bulk up whatever meal we were having. So I started by washing some green grapes and cutting them into little bundles and then once they had dried quite a bit I stored them in a Tupperware container. Next, I cut up one of our favorite fruit, which is pineapple. And I've shown this in other videos. I'm so curious, how do you guys cut your pineapple? Do you guys have one of those cool pineapple gadgets that does the twirly thing down the middle and removes the core? I don't know, we just love having fresh pineapple on hand. I often add it to our green smoothies as pineapple goes really well with greens and citrus things. And so we always have a Tupperware of some fresh cut up pineapple in our fridge. 
Next, I wanted to get some veggies prepped. These could either be snacks throughout the day with some hummus or nut butter. Yes, try some peanut butter with your carrots if you've never done that. It sounds weird, but it's really good. And comment down below if you've ever tried that before and what you think. But I find that we eat so much more produce when it's cut and prepared and looks beautiful in the fridge. So that was my goal this day. I peeled and cut up a bunch of carrots and I cut them to the perfect size so that they would stand straight up in the Tupperware I was using. And then once I got those all assembled inside of the Tupperware, I filled it with some purified water and so that these carrots would remain super fresh and crisp and juicy even while they sat in the fridge for the whole week. Next up, I repeated this process with some celery. I just washed the stalks really well, cut the ends off, cut them into thinner slivers or slices, and then I again measured out what size I would need my celery to be to fit in my Tupperware container in an aesthetic way. I don't know if that's super high maintenance, but it looked beautiful to me and made me want to reach for more celery throughout the week. Then I topped it with some purified water again, put on my lid and stuck it in the fridge. And I definitely didn't waste any of the pieces that didn't fit into my two containers as I knew they'd come in handy for soups or stews later in the week. The last thing that was left to do was to make sure everything was stored well in some Tupperware containers. I seriously made so much food in this one evening and one morning meal prep session and it was so nice to look into my fridge and see a plethora of veggies and fruits and hearty meals that could come in handy whenever we got hungry. And yeah, I just really enjoy meal prep. It's the way that I'm able to eat a balanced diet, not be so stressed throughout my week when meal times roll around. I can have healthy snacks to offer my kids whenever they ask, and I don't think the sight of a fully stocked fridge will ever get old to me. If you watch my videos, then I'm sure you too love to meal prep or want to meal prep more, and I would love to know why. What is your reason behind meal prepping? Please leave a comment down below letting me know your why, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss the next meal prep video.